Hey guys, welcome to the next part of Let's Play Football Manager 2015 with Derby, and this is the big one. I suppose because I think this is our first genuine realistic chance at actually getting some damn silverware <laughs> on this uh, save. We've been to two Carling Cup finals previously, once with, uh, oh sorry, both times we lost, uh, once with Aston Villa, the other a couple of years ago with this Derby team, obviously the squad's a lot different. Um, but I think that hopefully this could be third time lucky. I certainly hope so. We're just going over the uh, records there just to make sure that I was correct. So um, before we go to the match, I just want to give you a quick recap on to how um, things have happened since the last video. Not too many games have happened. Um, obviously, we left off, I think it was here. The Tottenham game was the last game. So we uh, actually managed to scoop up five past spares. Quite amazed at this. 5-2 uh, it finished. Uh, Son Jung Min, who is a beast, I recommend buying him at any chance you get. Obviously, I don't think he'll be particularly cheap, but he's a really good player. Uh, Mahoney with two Lingards. I think this was uh, very much reminiscent of last season, something which they've not done yet. Uh, Shane Duffy and Rocco Gallo with the other goals. Very good game. And then uh, we went back to Villa Park as per, and then Conor Mahoney again turning on the style. For two more goals, a 3-1 victory over Villa. Then came, unfortunately, a bit of a sacrifice, to be honest. We're fighting on all fronts, all four fronts, that is. And we had a really tough cha uh, challenge of Liverpool away, of course. If you remember in the previous video, I well, the first game we went over, in fact, was... 4-0 uh, drubbing at Anfield and I'm ashamed to say the same things happened again I did also in fact play a weakened team in real life I would probably get a touchline ban for that uh, but yeah obviously with Barcelona coming on Tuesday uh, I had to make uh, adjustments and I had to really compromise uh, the FA Cup I mean <clears throat> with obviously Liverpool away who are I just saw doing pretty decent in the league uh, it was always going to be tricky, so I ended up playing a load of young players who, you know, from the last video you may recognise players like Darko Vuko, who's only 16, he didn't have a great game. Um, Martinez, who continues, is just awful start for us. Uh, Wayne Knott actually continues in a decent form, I mean, 6.7 in, in the grand scheme of things isn't actually too bad. Uh, Jack Grimmer, I don't know what to do with this boy, I really, really don't. I mean, he, he talks about how he wants a chance in the first team, how he can possibly possibly say he deserves a first team place after that 5.5 i mean just look at his average rating 6.75 is not great is it and that's what i don't understand players no matter how crap they are will always take the upper sort of upper stance and go oh no you're treating me like crap well no it's because you've played like crap and you can't say that i know this is football manager classic but still come on you know <laughs> Be reasonable here. Anyway, that's my moaning over. So yeah, unfortunately we got to the fifth round. The target was the sixth round, which is pretty steep, if I'm honest, from the boards. But uh, there you go. They didn't uh, foresee us playing at Anfield. Then, I don't think I've ever been prouder of a nil-nil draw. We managed to hold Barcelona to nil-nil at Pride Park. Now, I know, obviously, you know, okay, nil-nil's not great, but they didn't get an away goal. That's what I say, yes. And if I'm honest, we should probably should have won this. They've got Serge Gnabry. I just want to show you Barcelona's team just very quickly, actually. Um, in fact, where can I show you their formations? Here we go. This is a really interesting... So, Lionel Messi has retired and is now gone from the game. If I go to their team, in fact... Oh, no, I can't, can I? Yeah. Uh, if we go to FC Barcelona, we go to the information, we go to Legends. As you can see, Lionel Messi is no longer clickable. Neither is Iniesta, neither is Xavi, neither is Puyol. Um, some really funny things here. Pep Guardiola is the manager of England. <laughs> Imagine if that was to happen. And uh, Ronald Koeman is manager of Genoa, which explains why they are so good. Um, Leonard Schlutzky, by the way, is the... Um, or Schlutzky, I'm not sure how you say that is the uh, manager of Barcelona. And he's not done a massively great job, if I'm honest, considering how many good players he's got. But um, the vice captain is a 38-year-old, Luis Suarez. Uh, these players like, you know, uh, Suarez, Neymar, Ronaldo, Messi, etc. I mean, M Messi, ironically, is the one who, t who retired first. 
and who appeared to not be the best. Ronaldo is now 40 years old. In fact, I'll show you uh, Ronaldo, in case I didn't in the last episode. I'm recording this ahead of time. But if we look here, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, the captain, at 40 years old, he's going to be retiring, unfortunately, at the end of the season, when I don't know why. But look at those stats. There's no red arrows. He's 40 years old. <laughs> You'll never find a more fitter sort of 40 year old in your life I mean just the top of Chris that he's got it look at his average rating he's got 19 goals that's not human <laughs> uh, Neymar is the captain by the way he's now 33 so he's got a few years left I guess I imagine he won't look like that at 30 years old I'd imagine he have grown up by then um, they've also as I say they've got Serge Gnabry they've also got Stephen the Fridge as I like to call him, um, who's, I, I think, a really good player, actually. I, I mean, obviously, we know he's a good player, but I really do think he's very good. Uh, Mark Ander to Stegen is 32. He actually got man of the match in this game, if you look, um, which I'm surprised by, because, I mean, he made a few good saves. I'll, I'll be fair to him. He did make a few good saves, but not... He didn't stand out to me and go, oh, my God, he denied me so many great chances or something. You know, we missed a fair few. I'm not going to show you the highlights because it's actually... Yeah, go on. I'll try and... Oh, okay. I can't, apparently. Um, okay, but... Never mind. Uh, look, put it this way. We go to the new Camp. We've got a chance, maybe, of getting an away goal. Who knows? You never know what could happen. Um, we played then, I guess, in the Premier League, back-to-back, -back, my two former clubs, and uh, we beat them both 2-1 uh, against uh, Newcastle here. Suso scoring for them, who is now got 30. Wow, he's still, still only 31 in 2025. Uh, Gallo and Mahoney. Again, with the goals. And then um, uh, this one was a bit of a fail again. Southampton. I don't know what it is. It's just, I've said it before, but Southampton and Swansea. It's these two bloody teams. Why are they? My, they're just my bogey teams. I mean, I've already said, you know, Southampton have a really good team. I've told you a million times. I mean, Harry Kane, actually, yeah, Harry Kane as well. He's obviously scored, but if we look, in case you missed it last time, he is in fact the second top goal, uh, second top goal scorer. He's got more than virtually everyone, with the exception of Julian Brandt, who is a bit of a beast. So, uh, yeah, that was a bit unfortunate, but you know, Southampton, I can't, I just can't beat them. <laughs> I just can't do it. Anyway, Cavalon Cup final. This is number three. I have no idea how this is going to go. I mean, we don't know if what West, what, uh, West Brom team is going to turn up. I usually, by the way, to counteract the, in my opinion, absolutely god awful tactical uh, tactics screen here. I mean, I if, if I'm going to criticise something on this football manager, I've I've likened to it now. Really, to be honest with you, I've I've calmed down with it, and I actually will say that I think this is pretty decent. I've seen so many people talk about how frustrated they are with the game, how they're just not playing it anymore. They don't want to. It's not fun. I can sympathise completely. I get it. I, I do get it. It's just <clears throat> I seem to have found a nice little place to wedge myself in and actually, you know, enjoy it with a good team here. Um, there is still a few things which I'll probably talk about during the match, uh, but overall, I think this is decent now. But I can sympathise with people who are not happy with the game for whatever reason, or you know, do you think it's a bit crap or for whatever reason they don't like it then but yeah as I say I can sympathize completely so I think that's a decent enough team this is usually what I go with now I don't want to play Martinez though actually Murillo has not been very good either hmm Tarkowski is injured how's Dyer he, he's not much fair I don't think Eric Dyer for some reason hmm you think we can get away with that I think we can get away with that He's really good, Dyer. I just, <laughs> I just sometimes like, as any defenders, they will have lapses in concentration. They will sort of just let you down. You just think, why did they do that? You know, <laughs> it just happens. Um, so yeah, I think that is okay to go. I think uh, Diego Poyet is here half back. Yeah, he should play as a half back. Um, a lot of you guys are giving me feedback on the team, things like that. A few people saying you should have more defensive minded midfield players so obviously th th this is now the settled tactic I think I mean 
I talked about in previous videos how I would rotate the, the tactics as be a bit of a tinker man, as they once called Claudio Ranieri, of course. Um, but I think this now the set tactic as a 4 1 3 2 with a defensive midfielder, or in this case a halfback, Diego Poet, who is um, just a wonderful player. I genuinely recommend getting him if you get a chance. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much it. I'll introduce you to a few of the players as well. So this is obviously the new signing which you saw last time, Jose Maria Granero. Um, not had the greatest of starts, but decent play. You all know Shane Duffy, he currently plays for Everton. He's the captain, he's been here for a number of years. Um, I think I think he's actually a legend, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Eric Dyer, you all know Eric Dyer. Daniel Francois, a um, bit of a risk this one. He's not actually as good as he looks, to be honest, but he's putting in some decent performances and I can't fault him. Diego Poet, um, fantastic player for England. <laughs> he actually, I think, scored his first England goal in the Euro 2024 semi final, <laughs> which I thought was quite cool. Uh, Conor Mahoney, you'll know about him. Callum Cook uh, is a real player. He currently plays for Middlesbrough. Again, seems to have developed quite well. Very strong midfield player. Tamara Gray. Um, playing nearly on his way out, but puts in a shift. In fact, he's lacking match fitness. I'm not going to play him. Good job I looked at that. Um, I'm going to play Patrick Roberts instead. This guy, if you follow um, follow me on Twitter, you'll know I also follow a guy called Football uh, Manager Hipster, or I think he's just Manager Hipster. Um, and he talks about how players like... Um, Cosmin Motti and Harry Kane, you know, sort of weird hipster player. I don't, I don't, I don't quite get it. But if you look, if you're on Twitter, look him up. Um, I think he's called Man Hipster Manager. He's got a picture of uh, AVB, and um, he talks endlessly about Harry Kane. Patrick Roberts is apparently another hipster footballer. I don't know why, <laughs> but he is. Um, Rocco Gallo, you know about this guy. He's a regen, 25 years old, Italian, bit of a beast. Really has set the world on fire this year. 21 goals so far. It hasn't actually felt like 21 goals though. I don't know why. I think he's just kicked on lately and lastly Vasco Saramago signed from Arsenal for 11 uh, just under 12 million pounds and this season he really kicked on you may remember of course uh, he was out for five months virtually almost well let's say the whole season I mean he got injured in November and basically came back as a sub on the last day of the season last year so yeah that was uh, not great for him so that's why his Stats aren't great for that year. Anyway, I've gone on for way too long. Let's get to some action. So, let's see. Who have they got then? So, they've got Delhi Ali, who uh, is a bit of a big place for MK Dons, I believe. However, he signed for West Bromwich Albion in the second season and has kicked on since. Uh, who else have they got here? Any players? Oh, my God. How the hell did you say that name? That's, that, that's not a name. That's just a collection of words. <laughs> um... Pearson, I recognise this guy. Toby Pearson, he plays for England. As you can see, he's got a few caps. Uh, finishing's 18. He's quite dangerous. So I've seen him before. He's uh, appeared near the top of uh, a few goal-scoring charts. So I'll have to watch out for him. So Gallo is the top goal-scorer in the competition. Let's go. So we've played Arsenal and Liverpool previously. I think, though, this may be the first cup final I've ever gone into where we are actually the favourites. So we'll see how we do. Bear in mind, West Brom are not the easiest team to play. They are, yep, there you go, Deli Ali. Personally, I think one of the most overpowered players on the game. I'm not saying that because um, he just scored. I genuinely do think he is exceptionally overpowered. Uh, I don't particularly rate him, if I'm honest. Uh, I think, I, I'm sure I signed him previously on an old FM and he wasn't very good for me. But yeah, I'm probably basing it off that, if I'm honest. Sort of in my subconscious. Oof! Oh my god, the ball's still free. My god's going on there. And Dyer just hoops it forwards. There's two cooks, apparently. I'm not going to make a too many cooks joke. Alright, go on. Oh, there's Mahoney with the shot. Good save from uh, Moore, the goalkeeper. And oh dear, it's all going a bit wrong at the moment. So we're 1 0 down. Delhi Ali with the goal from a corner, obviously. Oh, my god. oh Gaio has got to score. That's got. Okay, that was blatantly a corner, but okay. Because no one can get it, possibly get it that wrong. There's Callum Cook. Gallo, it's a corner again. <laughs> this time he gets to get it right. And again, we just, I, I need a set piece taken, man. We have got no, honestly, Mahoney, Roberts is decent, but Mahoney is just dreadful. He has wasted so many free kicks in his life here. 
I'd say he must have wasted at least 40 free kicks. And here come West Brom, my god. It's not going well at the moment, is it? I'll be honest, we haven't really had many clear cut opportunities. And they really should be 2 0 up, if I'm being honest. Okay, I'm gonna have to have a rethink, stop everything. Uh, let's not be disciplined. Okay, we're gonna have to close down and do that as well. Let's go back to what I usually have. And let's not exploit the flanks because they're not having a particularly good time at the moment. We'll keep it at that. That's what I usually keep it on, although I do tend to switch things off, as I say, willy nilly, um, at will, just. Yeah, just, just to mix things up a bit, keep the uh, opposition guessing, I guess. I know, though, that is a bit of a myth that the computer supposedly learns your tactics. I believe that is completely a myth. Um, but I think, just in case it is and it isn't, anyway... Oh, what a goal from Gallo. <laughs> there you go, you just see him in action there. What a strike from Rocco Gallo. Um, but yeah, if, if the computer does learn your tactics, then I mix it up just in case it does. And if not, then I mix it up anyway, just to, you know... Keep it fresh and look at this, Saramago. Here we go. I think the changes seem to have worked and more with a good save. I think that was going wide, actually. And there's Eric Dyer. Not a particularly good header, but we're back in the game at least. After a particularly bad start. And there we are. If we can get to half time level, I'd be quite happy because it's not been the greatest half in the world. Oh, God, here we go. This is naturally when they. Score a late. Oh, maybe it could be us. They don't usually show half time or end of half highlights of the first half. Here's Gail. Mahoney's offside. Oh, he's offside there. Nope, it's still Mahoney. Oof. May have even hit the bar. Right, okay, so that's half time. Not the greatest game in the world. I don't know why I show you. Oh, sorry, I don't know why the games um, always seems to throw up crap finals. Like maybe it's because of the size of the pitch. That's where I always put down to. That's where I always put them down to when it's a crap final. You know, Wembley, etc. They're always ginormous pitches. Um, okay, San Marino's not had a great game, has he? But I don't particularly want to play Santa Maria at the moment. I wonder what's his match fitness like. Oh no, it's okay. I'm not going to bring him on. Actually, no, I will because Saramago is on a yellow card. If he wasn't, I probably wouldn't have brought him on. And Mahoney's also injured. But to be honest with you, I don't think these like light orange minor injuries here have any effect whatsoever on the on the player's ability to play the game. I don't think it ever has. To be honest with you, I don't see the point of them. All it is is that there might be, you know, uh, a possibility that he might have an injury, or a higher possibility that he might have a bad injury at the end of the game even that's quite low so yeah again you can start to see you know just average ratings of the defense is just constantly crap and look i know these players are the good players but jose maria granero is i know he's a good player but he's not putting in the performances that i know he can do and yeah daniel francois again time and time again i just can't find good wing backs uh, full backs i just can't <laughs> and if you're saying you're playing them in the wrong role well no Limited fullback, that's what it recommends. If I go on his profile, limited fullback, defend, that's what it recommends. That's what the scout says, what the assistant manager says. So, I don't know what I'm doing wrong particularly. Maybe they're just having a bad game, but they consistently, in and out, have these bad games. And, you know, you saw in the last video how many goals we conceded, and it's just happening time and time and time again, and I'm just getting bored of it now, to be honest with you. And I'm starting to sound like those people who get bored of the game. But I'm not actually bored of the game. I'm bored of just conceding so many goals without getting the proper feedback from the, the game. Really. I mean, okay, well, every so often we'll have, you know, Jack Grimmer, as you saw, getting a 5.5. .5, but that's a once in a blue moon thing, you know. Anyway, I'm trying not to stop many here. Santa Maria, close at the corner. He will take it. And there's Eric Dyer again. So if we do lose this one, of course, I mean, I'm not saying that it's, if they, this would be the end of the world, but my God, what will it take for me to win something? <laughs> is Santa Maria, that is a shot. Oh, okay, it's deflected, I was going to say. <laughs> right, Santa Maria and Dyer going in again. Right, second chance for Santa Maria. What's he going to do? Takes them on. There's Rocco oh, Gallo, so close. Again, these headers just going wide of the post. Here we are really starting to kick on now. Really good stuff so far. There's Cook. Gallo, that's 2-1. Great strike from the Italian. 
and as it stands now we are leading so i'm going to push it back to just control for now since we do appear to be playing quite well and there's another example of adam stevens absolutely atrocious kicking and that really should have been a goal wow ali okay maybe he's not as overrated as i thought there's conor mahoney oof Renero back in sylvester away cook because it doesn't really have long sh uh, long shots as his uh, main ability neither poet i'll be honest roberts does though but tackled I think at the start of the game he's only about 18 so you might want to uh, just get your scouts on him immediately if you are starting up a new game right okay we're gonna make another substitution here we're going to bring off Mahoney just in case he does get injured or whatever we'll bring on Gray um, he obviously you know he's a bit of a catalyst but he hasn't been a, hasn't had a great uh, game if I'm honest Mahoney and I might as well take him off if he's injured not two reasons there kill two birds with one stone so to speak so here we go, 15 or so minutes to go. And here's Damari Gray. Taking it all the way, here's Roberts. Pulls it back to Francois. I think one more goal would kill it. Most definitely Cook, he is susceptible to that. Just dawdling on the ball a bit. And Poyet occasionally, although against much better opposition, I guess. There's Santa Maria, surely, no. Still not gonna go in for him. Okay, so we might have to switch it to defensive soon. Now, that that is one thing I've definitely noticed over the course of the last few FMs is how much quicker and snappy you have to make decisions. You have to be a lot quicker. You can't just let it play out anymore. And there's Gray, and that is surely super sub Gray once again. That is surely the first piece of silverware for us. I'm not going to take any chances though. I'm just going to drop a little bit deeper. I, I actually never did this usually. I vastly underestimated it, but I would really recommend it. if you are now gotten a lead. Especially on these, on the modern FMs, sort of FM 14, 15, when you can never be sure. As you saw in the previous video, we were 5-1 up against Everton and they brought it back to 5-5 five, five on aggregate. Um, you can never be sure. Anything can happen. Which is like real life, I guess. Um, okay, let's do that and just lower the tempo. There we go. That should be okay. Just to set, make set of it. See what I mean? Look at that now. If they get a goal, you know. There's two cooks in, actually, yeah, it's two, two cooks playing in midfield. Probably versus each other in the individual battles. <laughs> but yeah, finally, I think, 11 years, we could finally have our first piece of silverware. Oh, good uh, interception by Dyer. Thought well, that was going to go all the way then. So it looks like the tactical changes did work. Here's Rocco Gallo, cook going in. He's found Santa Maria, no. Good block, but I think that is going to be it. There's 45 seconds left. Unless we get something here to really put the icing on the cake. I do believe that is our first piece of silver. So it took 11 years. It took 11 years, but we finally have something to show for. And I'm very happy that it's with this Derby team because I'm really happy with how it's going. The league could be better. Oh, good save by Stevens. But, you know, we have a lot of good people now. Adam Stevens is another one. You know, really good goalkeeper. He could be here for another 15 years. Very steady for most of the time. The shot stopping could be a tad better. But, you know, we look at the players here and we have some really good stuff. And there it is. Finally, after so long, we have some damn silverware. <laughs> Callum Cook. What a sign he's been. Man of the match with a 9 rating. And I think we... Oh, no, we don't actually have any... Uh, there's no achievements for that, really? Okay. Your first piece of silver. Okay, so there you go. Derby, Lift Capital One Cup. That is, of course, their first Capital One Cup. They've never, I guess in real life, ever actually appeared in a final. So I hope uh, if there are any Derby fans watching that you are quite happy to see that. Uh, Possession-wise, not outstanding, to be honest. But as you can see, we kind of dominated the uh, game and the shots department. So there we go. Um, breaking the mould of the big four. The old big four, I suppose. There we go. He was na there you go. named... Premier Division Manager of the Year 2015-16 and now finally been able to find success with Derby. Aston Villa, nothing happened of course, but uh, Newcastle got them to the Champions League, couldn't do much, did manage to win Manager of the Year and as you can see now, winning finally the Capital One Cup. So how am I holding up for? He's only out for three or four days, that's fine. Fans are happy, that's a handy little thing here because you can see our finances is not particularly great and if you are wondering oh my god what, what what the hell have you done it's because we're currently paying for a new stadium i don't know if it says it here but we are currently paying for a new stadium that's why 
the, the finances are not as healthy, I think, as they could probably be, or at least look. So there we go. Um, we go through all this news. See, there you go, England manager. I mean, look at that. We have loads of England, English players here. Stevens, Cook, Poyet, Dyer. Uh, Martin, who? <laughs> oh, wow, they actually even got a world ranking. He's actually not... I didn't... Well, Francois is not actually French. <laughs> oh, no, he is. Sorry, I beg your pardon. He just um, has a double citizenship. One of the big favourite we wear. Okay, whatever. Uh, so that's the qualify for the Europa League. If all else fails, if it goes catastrophically wrong, then we can at least say, well, at least we're in the Europa League. <laughs> Uh, in the league that is so here's how the league stands obviously we have a couple of games in hand I wouldn't pay much attention to this uh, because people have you know some players or some teams are on 28 27 26 still a bit all over the place to be honest so I'll probably you'll, you'll get a much better picture basically at the end of the next video when we have the season review so um, thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed Finally, we lift the trophy and we have some damn success because, uh, let me tell you, it's been a long time since I've actually done something like that on Football Manager. So, um, yeah, very much, uh, very big thanks to you for watching. Um, I'll be back then with the season review in the next video. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you then. So, goodbye for now.